Welcome back. We are talking with uh, Dr. Mohammad Trela. As we know, organ donation cadaver law is very important. What is the st status of cadaver law in India? The cadaver law was passed um, several years ago, actually. I think it's maybe more than 15 years. That's something that Pakistan needs to remember. It takes a long time for people to actually start donating. So public education is very important. And also it is necessary to fine-tune. There has been a lot of issues even within the law as to which are the hospitals that can donate, which are the hospitals that can, that can actually transplant. So the transplant hospitals, the donation has to take place in the same place. So there has been a number of issues in the law which needed fine-tuning over many years. Actually, these law laws are passed to... In the purpose of the law is to facilitate organ donation so lives can be saved, but the purpose of the law is also to protect the public so people or the professionals are not seen to be taking undue advantage and there is no criminal activities going on. So, so the law has to, in one end, facilitate organ donation and in the other end also protect the public from, from criminal behavior. So when it, is, when it is devised, there will be some element of tightening and over a period of time, they have to be fine-tuned for it to happen. So even though the law was passed over 10 years ago, hardly any donation has taken place over the years. It's only now in the southern part of India, organ donation has improved. And in our city, where I come from, in Chennai, we have about 100 uh, donors and about 100 um, liver transplants taking place a year due, due to cadaver donation. In the rest of the country, the number is still very small. But it is slowly improving. So it's a very slow process. One needs to understand. And the public have to have confidence in the system before they will start donating to saving other people's life. So public education is very important. Media is going to play an important role in making the public understand that cadaver, cadaver donation is very important to save lives. So... That's the status in India, and here in Pakistan, you are in a very early stage. The law has been passed, but the numbers, if the number were to increase, then the public education has, has an important role there. Here by cadaver law, how many patients can benefit? Donating multiple organs is going to save multiple lives. Uh -huh. A cadaver person who's died can donate two kidneys to two individuals who are suffering from renal failure and dialysis. They can donate a heart, they can donate their lungs, they can donate their cornea, you know, and even some, sometimes they can donate soft tissue and skin as well. Liver generally can be used for two people. One liver can save two lives. Just like we talked about living donor liver transplant where somebody can give half a liver and keep their own half a liver, you can divide the liver into two halves or sometimes usually it's divided into a smaller part for a child and a larger part for an adult. But actually, I have used one liver for three people, mm. where we have taken 30% for a child, about 50% for an adult, and the central part of the liver, which does not have a blood supply, has been used for hepatocyte transplantation. Okay. Hepatocytes, the cells are retrieved, and we have treated children with metabolic liver disease. So no part of the liver is wasted. A little part of the liver usually is discarded, when we do a split. I think it's important for you to understand what a split liver transplant yes, is. Yes, I am asking uh, this question. Okay. Oops. Now, we talked about living donor transplant. Living donor transplant, the liver is divided. We don't use the term split for it. Divided and the donor keeps a half and the recipient receives half a liver. Okay. In a split liver transplant, it's a whole cadaver liver which is donated. A liver is split into two and transplanted used for transplanting two people. That is called a split liver transplant. And I have done this over many, many years. I have one of the largest experience in the world in split liver transplant, where one organ is transplanted for two people. I've done probably about 400 split liver transplants alone, okay. where two, two people have benefited out of an organ. But with, with, I mean, maybe some research needs to be done into exploring options of actually transplanting three patients with one liver. I think it is technically possible 
for example, the third recipient may have to be a very small baby where we use a small central part of the liver for transplanting. But actually, as a solid organ transplant, liver has not been used for more than two people. But a combination of hepatocyte transplant and liver transplant, it's been used for three people. Okay. Now you already discussed split transplanting. There, here, another thing, another term is swept transplant. What is swap. it? Swap. Oh. Um, swap transplant is part of a living donor technique. It's very common when we are assessing patients. For example, a 50-year-old man comes and his 20-year-old son wants to donate for him. And the 50-year-old man can be blood group A and it is possible for his son to be blood group B. So then he cannot, we have to match blood groups, he cannot donate his B group liver to his A group father. And we might find that there may be another family where the donor is um, the opposite, B and then the recipient is A or something like that. In this situation, the two families agree, then we can swap the donors. Yes, it depends on their consent. The son cannot do donate to his father, mm -hmm. but the son can donate for somebody else's mother. So the, uh, the mother's son can donate for his father. Mm -hmm. But what is important to remember here is the swap transplant has to be done on the same day. Okay. All operations have to take place at the same time. Reason. The reason is the son is going to, can't donate for his father and instead his father receives a transplant for some, from somebody else's daughter or son. The next day, if we do one set of operation today and if we go the next day and if this son refuses to donate for that person's father, we cannot force them to because it's a voluntary act. This opera, you have to have a consent. You can't lock them up in a room okay. and then do the operation the next day. Do you understand? So both donor operation has to take place at the same time and both recipient operation therefore needs to take place immediately after. That means you're doing four, four big operation. At the same time. At the same time. You need four operating theatres. You need a big team of people. So we have done that. Recently we had a, a Sri Lankan family where the donors were not suited for their own family member but were suited for some other family member. And they were also a Sri Lankan family and they had a discussion. And we introduced the concept to them and they were excited about the concept. And we did all the four operations in the same day and both sets of patients, all four patients, have done extremely well. So it provides an opportunity in a living donor. Instead of us saying, your son is not suitable to donate and therefore go back, mm. now we have an option to explore because at any time we will have you know, three or four families being worked up for transplant. They can also wait for another family to come with that combination, so which how is many, How many operations you already uh, done? Oh, I do way? at the moment three or four living donor transplant every week. So this year we should do at least 150 liver transplants, living donor liver transplants in Chennai. Up till now we are discussing about the patient health. What are the effect of the transplantation on donor? In this combination, I mean, we are trying to save a life of a patient with end-stage liver disease and their close family member, son or father or cousin is coming forward to donate. On no account, these people who are healthy individuals should be harmed because do no harm is the most important principle in medicine. But they are undergoing a big operation and there are risks. Now, if I say to people, I, it's, the risks are very small, but there are small risks. If you look at the internationally, all the living donor operations done and donors having donated, the risk, is, the risk for the donor when they want to donate half their liver is put at 1 in 300. You might say 1 in 300. It's a small number. So for every 300 patients, donors, one donor can get into trouble and maybe even die of that problem. One donor? One donor out of, of 300. Out of 300, okay. So it's about 0.3% hmm. is the international statistics that is currently running. So it's not an operation where you can say it's no risk. There is a very tiny risk and there is a very tiny calculated risk.
okay? But the units who are doing it have to take care that never happens. If they take precautions, if they actually work up the donor thoroughly and select donors who are only fit and not select donors who are in any way not fit, then you can avoid this complication. So it is important also for the family to understand that there is a tiny risk. Fortunately, I mean, I've, you know, with the will of God, I've never had a donor mortality. But it is something that the family have to be aware of. Yes, they should be know mm. about the yes. things. Okay, uh, here you are... But otherwise huh? they, I mean, they have a normal life. They don't have any, any problem for the rest of their lives because their liver will grow, their liver function will be normal. The, 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 the issues are this tiny little risk that they have. Other than that, they come through it. They will, they will be normal. Donors should not have any long-term effects. Similarly, young women who are donating should not have any long-term effect with their pregnancy, with their married life. They should not have any effect. What are the complications of uh, liver transplant in the patient? In patients, it is a big operation and therefore all the complications of any major operation is there. First of all, there is a risk of dying itself, which is a small risk. Usually you say the perioperative risk is about 5% or at the most 10% is the perioperative risk of dying. That is nearly 1 in, one in 10 to 1 in 20, which is very different from donor. Donor, we said, is 1 in 300. It's very rare. Whereas in the recipient, these patients will die in the next six months to one year without the operation. So that is a risk they're willing to take. If you say to somebody, the chance of you being alive at one year is hardly 10%, but your operation, you know, there is a 90% chance of survival, which means there is a 10% chance that you may die, they'd still take it because without the operation, they're not going to be alive for one year. Okay, so that's, that's, that's again, it's an important issue that they need to understand. The other complications are really technical complications can happen. One of the blood vessels can occlude, which may need an immediate reoperation. If they are very sick at the time of transplantation, the blood loss can be excessive. Having said that, we can do transplants even without blood transfusion. It's possible to do transplant without blood transfusion, and it's also possible that they may need a huge amount of blood transfusion. And you can have all the connections which can get blocked. The bile ducts can leak, the bile ducts can block. And 10% of patients ultimately may need another operation to fix these problems. Okay, but in general, I don't want to focus, you've asked me the question, what are the complications of this mm. operation? <laughs> Sometimes it's depressing to know that there are a number of complications but you will find 85 to 90 percent of patients will go through the operation with very few side effects and will come through and do extremely well long term. That's an important message for people to hear. It will be a small number of patients who will have complications and may suffer of it and may even die of it. It's uh, break time. Don't go away. We will back and talk with uh, Dr. Mohammad Trela after a break. Thank you.